If you're using Ableton and haven't changed these default mm. settings yet, you're making things way harder for yourself than they need to be. I've been producing in Ableton for about 10, 11 years now, and I'm not being dramatic when I say some of these settings have ruined vocals for me, wasted a bunch of my time, and just generally caused me a lot of frustration. <laughs> Once I changed them, all of that was gone. And I just wanna give a quick shout out to my good Judy Sides because she just did a very similar video for Logic users, so I thought, hey, Ableton users, let me share some of what I've learned. All right, the first setting you wanna change is the auto warping on long samples. All right, it's this button here. When it's yellow, it's on. And what it means is this is responsible for how Ableton stretches your audio to fit the tempo of your song. Now, the reason you don't want this for long samples is because this is going to affect full songs, stems, like if you're collaborating with another producer and they send you, you know, a drum stem that's three minutes long, it's going to try to shift it around and make it fit tempo and it can cause some really annoying issues. So I just dragged in this track that's clearly 122 beats per minute, but I set my tempo of the session to 160 and I have the warping on for long samples. Check out what it sounds like. It's very fast. It's supposed to be this, this tempo, right? That's when I turned warp off. With this on, if it was, you know, even faster, it would be just totally ridiculous. So we don't want that. Press command comma to access the settings. We need to go to record warp and launch. And right here, auto warp long samples, you want this off. But you should still warp the shorter samples like loops from splice because that's what helps you gonna have a faster workflow. My next tip is also going to be about warping. And this time it's gonna be about changing the default warp mode. When I first started in Ableton, I remember this driving me crazy for months. <laughs> I would have random pops and clicks in my vocals, these little artifacts. And I would be like, what is going on? I just saying this, I didn't even process this in any way. What is happening? And what was happening is that my warping was set in beats mode. That's a warping mode specifically made for, you guessed it, beats, <laughs> for drums. So it ends up getting kind of messy when it comes to guitars, vocals, anything you record straight into your session. A much better default mode to have this on is complex. It's very forgiving. It does doesn't really mess things up. So again, command comma, you go to preferences and again, record warp and launch. And right here, default warp mode, you want that set too complex as I already had mine. Next, I'm gonna show you how to create a cleaner workflow for yourself by hiding versions of plugins that you don't use. If your plugin search looks like this, I have two versions of Avox Duo. Oh, I have three decapitators. If yours looks like that, let's talk. The reason you don't want this is because anything that makes it harder for you to just grab a plugin and be creative is a hindrance to your creative workflow, period. If I even take five seconds to be like, oh, which version of Decapitator do I need to use? You know, me squinting at the screen here. That is not good for my creativity. Plus, it just looks like a mess. And if you're on an older version of Ableton, you might not even have this definition that they've added between VST2 and VST3. Just a little while back, mine didn't have the numbers, so both of them said VST. So you didn't even know which one you were using, which can also be an issue because sometimes having different types of plugins like audio units, VST3, regular VST in one session can can cause like issues and crashes. I have had that happen. So ideally you would just be using whichever version you like the most. I like VST3, it's the latest and greatest. It works really well for me. So here's how you set this up. Again, we're going to preferences. We're gonna go this time to plugins. And the first thing you wanna uncheck is use VST2 plugin system folders. They are still on your computer. So let's say if you are using another DAW where you are using VST2, they will be accessible. In that DAW, but they're just not gonna clutter up your plugin list here in Ableton. And then I'm gonna check off these two. Use audio units version two, use audio units version three. And now look at this beauty. All we have is VST3. Okay, so this next tip is a setting workaround that has taken me a long time to develop. So you know how recording into Ableton comes with 
latency issues. <laughs> if you know, you know. So I'm obviously somebody who records a lot of vocals. I record guitars, pianos into Ableton. So this is something I've come up with to help me build out my sessions without losing my mind. <laughs> it has everything to do with this setting here in options, delay compensation. This is my preset, by the way, that I use for every session. So in this default template that I have set up, the delay comp is off. And I will tell you why, because when it is on, I actually have a hard time playing my MIDI. When I hit a note, it actually plays later than when I hit it, which makes it very difficult to play anything, record anything, and puts me in a mindset of always avoiding recording MIDI, which is not good. But when I turn it off, I can actually play my parts and hear what I'm playing. What a concept. <laughs> Obviously not perfect timing, but that was a lot better than if I was hearing it wrong. <laughs> But here's a very, very important thing to remember. Once I do get all my basic MIDI recorded and I'm moving on to singing, top lining, I turn delay comp back on because if I don't, this is what my vocals sound like against the track. I could search high and low. I would not find it, no. Someone would love me like you do. You know you're special. The vocal is not in time and I promise you, I did not sing it like that. And I will prove it to you that I did not sing it like that. Because when I put the delay comp back on, this is what it sounds like. I could search high and low. I would not find it, no. The reason this happens is because I have this preset on my vocal group. As you can see in the corner down there, it adds 1200 samples of latency. Not something I've experienced in other DAWs, but we have to work around this if we are recording into Ableton. So that's why delay comp goes on as soon as I start doing vocals. You should have your delay comp settings set to what I just said to help avoid all of this frustration and difficulty along with a lot of other settings. As you can see, I have, you know, presets here for 808, snare, kick, pad vocals, gang vocals, BGVs, dubs. And this obviously is very specific to my workflow as a K-pop songwriter, pop songwriter. The point is for your productions to sound really good fast. I go over all of this in my music producer crash course, which is coming soon. If you guys sign up for early access, I actually sent a weekly exclusive tip just to the early access list. And I just love sharing whatever I'm focused on that week, whether it's creating effects, designing synth sounds, I don't know, perfecting my vocal recording. It's a pretty cool community. Speaking of vocal recordings. Another thing that is a huge, huge sort of like brain space saver for me is having the right input set up in my preset. I do have two mics here. This is usually my content mic and the mic I have over here is my recording mic. I used to have it accidentally set to two and I would just always start recording because I would be in a creative process, not thinking about my settings and I would get a blank recording and it's just very frustrating. We're all about eliminating frustrating things here. So yeah, I have it set up to one because that's that mic that I mostly record on. And of course, if I, you know, I'm recording on this one for whatever reason, I'll set it to three. But please do this. This will just prevent a lot of waste it takes. These small changes have made a huge difference for me over time. I'm curious which of these will help you guys the most. Let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, I have some other videos you might want to watch. I'll see you next time.